Affinity Photo has lots of great features, lots and lots, but one thing it doesn't seem to allow is a way of adding brush strokes around the edge of a layer or stroke. Well, you can do it if you've got designer as well. So let's just right, go and remove this one. And you can see, of course, I've got that brush stroke around there. I can remove that now. What I need to do is just go over here and paintbrush tool. And I'm going to select a brush. I'm just going to go for one of these brushes, a tight brush, and simply click. And you can see now I've just added that brush. Well, what I can also do is I can rotate it because I want to actually have it rotated. So I'm just going to pre-rotate it. So I'm just going to have it upright. So once I've done that, I can now export this. So file and go down here to export. So I can save it because the one thing that you can do in Affinity Designer, you can import brushes in two different formats. And that's what I'm going to be importing, that PNG file. So now export. And the key thing is selection area. So I just want that actual selection. I don't want the whole of the document. So export. And now I'm just going to call it type. Type.png. So I've got that. With that, I can now go over to another document. So let's just go to another document. I'll make another one there. Okay. A completely empty document. And then I'm going to select an ellipse. So apply it. And you can see there, I've got that shape there. Now, if I go over here and just click this, it doesn't add it. It'd be nice if it did, but it doesn't. There's no option for that, as far as I'm aware. So I've got this design, and now what I can do, I can go into Designer. Really quick way of doing it, File and Edit in Designer. So Edit in Designer, and you can see you've got exactly the same as before, but now in Designer, not pub Photo. Just go over here to Brushes, and you can, of course, select any brush section category. There's a whole load of them. Now I've got, obviously, there, Oils too. This isn't an oil brush, but I'm still going to add it just to that. So go to the right side menu and you can find the brush menu over here so if you can't see it here it is brushes so just go here and then go down here to new textured intensity i'm going to save it in both styles so new textured intensity brush so click that they are subtly different and you can see there i've got type so type click open and now you can see it there and now i can do exactly the same with the other one so just right again right side menu new textured image brush Click that and again go down there and set type and open again. And you can see I've added. Now you can see the difference straight away. You've got a subtle difference between the two. And now if I go to this first one, so let's select the first one, you can see it applied there. Applied to the current stroke. Very quick and easy. I could, of course, use any shape. I don't, it doesn't have to be a circle, it could be a curve, it could be anything you create using, say, like the various tools like over here, the pen tool or a like pencil tool, etc. It doesn't matter. It's applied to it, and now I can manipulate it. So you can see the color there, black. So if I double click, bring that color up, and I can go for green, blue, run through so you can get different colors and click close. But also, what you can do. Double click this, you can change this as well. You can change brush width, you can see as you see it, you just about make out the word type there. So type, but also you can go here, you've got size variance. Now I'm not going to particularly use that, I'm not using pens or anything like that. So I'm just going to go down here, body repeat. So I want repeat. And now you can see what happens, you get this lovely circular design of obviously the word type and close. And of course, I can change the color. I might decide, you know what, I want to go for green or red and so on. Close. Now, of course, I can duplicate this design. And then I could, of course, go for red for one, green for another, to create all kinds of very, and it doesn't have to be the word type, of course. This could be a far more sort of a Greek ornament design. Could be anything, stars, as you can see there, or any of these shapes in here. These sort of designs, dense oil, etc. So now, you see, I've got that one applied. But if I click this one, you can see what happens now. I've got this design. And I can also double click this one, and I can do exactly the same. So I can change the brush width. You can see the word type. But again, I can click here, repeat. And now you can see that. Click close. So with that, I can then go over here, and I can still click over here. And I can maybe make that green. And you can see blue, 
all those sort of colors. You can do a load of different things. But also what you can do is go up here to stroke. Just click up here. You've got gradient, so you can go on the gradient, add gradient, make a gradient effect there. Not always the greatest there, but, but also what you can do is you can go to swatches. So you can click on this and you can see, maybe go for that. And you can create some interesting designs using that approach. But also go up here and just click this. And you get what you got the original color. You got the original, so if you've got a green or blue design that you've brought in, it will still be green, blue, exactly as you expect it. So you've got this, and now with that, you can, you can modify it, double click again, change there, you can reduce that down, brush width, maybe go to there, and click close. Now, one thing also you might want to do, might remember, want to remember, is stroke. Just go to the stroke panel, and that's in window and stroke. And you can go down here and scale with object. So click there. And now when you scale this, so if I just go here, resize it, you see it doesn't distort. If I don't do that, if I turn that off and then I resize it, it just gets ugly. It just doesn't look as good, it doesn't scale well. So undo that and scale with object. So you've got that. You can also, of course, modify thing. You can add an arrow to it, all those sort of things. Don't particularly think I want that. But you can also modify the pressure. So you can just change this. You can just click there and you can see that this changes. It should. It doesn't because the thing is, I didn't go over here to the brushes. Again, go here, double click, make certain you've got here repeat, size variance. So you can see now, if you change that, close, you can see it distorts. Click there. And you can then modify that and you can see you change these settings. And again, the pressure, click there. You can create all variety of designs. I'm not going to do that, but I'll just reset that. But you can see you can create some slight variation in the size. So with this design, what you can now do, if you want to go back, of course, go back to File and Edit in Photo. So in Photo, now you've got this document open now. You've got this and you can then manipulate this. Now you'll notice it's got no fill. You can, if you want to add a fill, make like that. You can do that, of course. But you can also just get rid of it so by clicking here again. Exactly the same. It removes the fill or removes the stroke. Also, if you're currently using 2.5, 2.4, etc., you can go over here, move tool selected, press return, bring up this. It's move slash duplicate. And then you can go here. here duplicates so you can turn around and say I want 14 Obviously at this point you can't see anything but you can go here to rotation and you can see you can rotate it but you can also scale and you can create some interesting text effects very quickly using this rotation change that so you do that rotate that way maybe change the scale go the other direction and so on you can create all kinds of weird and wonderful designs very quickly and it could be with any brush it doesn't have to be with word type but you can see the design there and all it is, lots of layers. So you can select any of those layers and you can change a color. So you can always go over here, click effects, and then change maybe the color overlay, etc. So color overlay, change the blend mode, maybe the difference and so on. But also what you can do is you can actually select all of those layers. So you can just go down here and select all those layers, click effects, and you can change the color for all of them. But also you can maybe go for 3D to create a 3D effect. Maybe click here, outer shadow, just to add a little bit of shadow there, and close, and so on. So you can create some really weird and wonderful designs just using this path effect. Now, let's just go and select them all. So all selected. So exact same, just steps, and you can use this for anything. So let's just go here, maybe this one, image brush. So let's just quickly go to the, again, back to the paintbrush tool. So select that. And I'm going to go with this one, image brush. So click there. And again, apply it, you can see the design there. Well, once you've got that, you can export that again. So file and export, so that's exported. And you can see again, make certain it's selection area. If you don't do that, you'll get the whole the document. So selection area, and then click export. So circular, and save. So once you've done that, you again can go over, let's just go to another document, or let's just get rid of that one. In this document, I'm just going to create another shape, but this time it's just going to be a curve. So I'll just go over here, maybe the pen tool. Of course, you could use the vector, all those sort of features 
InDesign as well. That's another option. But you go here and then you can simply click and just add curve very quickly. Something very basic. Very basic curve like that. And exact same as before. You can change things. But again, unfortunately, you can't just quickly add that. That stroke there. Infinity Photo. But you can't click there and add that. Wouldn't it be nice if it could do that. But you can add a stroke. However, exactly as before, go to File, and you can go to Edit in Designer. So Edit in Designer, you've got exactly the same as before. Now with the brushes, I've of course got this timer, but I've also created, obviously, that other one that I created earlier, or I could use one of these ones. So like, click there for the star. Perfectly reasonable as well. Or click this one, and you can see a variety of different designs as you go through all these ones. These are obviously all saved. Again, go to Brushes here, here, and go down here to new textured intensity or textured image. I'm going to go with that one, but new textured image, you can do both. And then go with circular. So select circular and then click open. And then you've got your circular one there. Always defaults to this, this one. So double click. If you go here to stretch, and you can modify this, of course, as well. You might decide, you know what? I don't want all of the, the word. You can see you can just stretch it, change the tail there, offset. You've got all the head offset etc. You can manipulate it all kinds of ways. I'm just going to keep it like that. But you've also got option here for fold, overlap, pull, etc. Please check out my other videos on how to use this brush editor. So let's go for repeat again. So now click there, repeat. And you can see now you've got your design that I've just created applied all the way along this curve. And you can obviously modify the brush width so you can reduce it down so you get that. Now, unfortunately, one option that will be lovely would be a spacing option. Unfortunately, that's not available here in Designer. It would be really nice if you could sort of turn around and say, oh, you know what, I want to squeeze them in so they go on top of each other. It would be a, a real nice feature, but you can do or size variants, etc. And close. So again, you've got this design, and then you can, of course, manipulate it up here. Just click here, and you can say, oh, you know what, I want that 50, or reduce it down. But again, they're all equally spaced. All equally spaced. Also, a randomized feature would be nice as well, so you could have different positions. By the by, again, scale with object. You can always do that because then when you do this, you can see it scales nicely. It doesn't sort of like all distort in weird ways. So you can just scale it out like that. And of course, you can still manipulate it, add additional points. Simply go over here, go to the node tool, node tool, click on the node, and you can then, of course, drag this down. And as you do that, you can see what happens. Click there and drag that around, drag that out, and so on. So you can create all kinds of designs. Again, what you can do, you can always, oops, let's just go back to there, drag it that way around. You can always go back to photo, so file, then edit in photo again, exact same as before. You've got your design there, and exact the same as before. What you can do with that selected, make sure you've got the move tool selected, press return or enter on the keyboard, and you've got again, scale and you've also got horizontal so duplicate number of copies say 17 and you can go horizontal you can see you can create an effect like that they're just layers and of course you can also use rotation as well so you can rotate and create some really weird and wonderful designs using this approach click ok now this design there are all these curves can be individually manipulated so you can select any of them and then design just use the node tool to manipulate them further and of course, you can then group them all together, combine them, apply effects, as well as effects, and much, much more. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Bye.